will actually go ahead from where we left uh, yesterday evening. Uh, I had actually given you at that time six possible methods which have been defined in RSC 3261, which actually can be used. Out of these two actually can be sent without creation of any session, without basically technically creating any dialogue. So, one of them is option, other one is invite. So, this I have not told, I am telling it for first time. Invite we are already aware of. So, invite A can cancel are technically used for setting up of the session, buy is for terminating, register is for registering and options is for querying. The other entity, okay, what are the capabilities with that server actually. Okay. So, the request URI which is formed. this universal resource identifier. So, far I have only told about SIP for example, Atlanta dot com kind of thing. So, the I have only talked about so far this thing, but uh, as far as RFC is concerned when you make an implementation, you need not only use this, you can actually use SIP, you can use SIP S. Even other kind of URI standards can be followed and you can even implement those URIs. URIs also can be used in the system that is permitted uh, RFC as per that uh, does not say anything specifically. Only the, the problem is, if you implement some other kind of URI scheme, then it is the problem of the SIP entity, it has to figure out what has to be done with that, whether it has to be mapped on to another SIP URI or it has to be mapped to a, a non SIP URI another one, but that will be headache of the entity. As a SIP we will not bother, but we require, so this is what we call the scheme. So, SIP A and SIP S are two schemes, you can even use other schemes. URI structure has to be there, has to be a domain name. From domain name, you will find out where the request actually has to go. So, that is the only important thing. So, domain name is important, but the scheme actually can change. So, in fact, for telephony, there has been already a scheme which was built. So, which can be used alternately, this is as per RFC 2806 scheme is known as TEL. So, you might have actually seen this thing at lot of places is a telephony thing or maybe whatever is a domain name kind of concept which can be there. So, tell URI is also there. So, this also can be used. This is one example, there are many others which people have built over the time. But the translation from this non SIP URI to SIP URI or non SIP to non SIP is a responsibility of the entity which is implementing the protocol but you can use even non SIP URIs, that is one important thing. Okay, usually, because when I have been telling, people will actually conceive an idea, a notion that always SIP URI has to be used. No, it is not needed. You can use something else also. So, now coming to the status line, because last time it was the request uh, thing, which was actually talked about. So, either there was a request line or oblique status line. So, request line structure I have defined last time. So, status line So, now mostly it is I am just discussing is about the rules which have to be followed. So, status line typically will be written as this should be equal to So, this should contain a SIP version, a single space character, a status code, another single space character and then of course, reason phrase and in the end you have to have CRLF, carriage return line feed character which has to be present. So, that is a BNF definition for uh, the status line. So, request line I have already told. Reason phrase. P 
pH A will not come sorry, <laughs> this A should not happen. So, this is basically human readable entity, this will not be ent interpreted by the machine, this will be interpreted by the machine, this you are going to write. So, that some entity might be actually using an older version of RFC uh, or SIP, SIP V 1. So, in that case you will behave accordingly or you will reject if it is not as per your this thing. So, you have to specify when SIP V 3 for example, will come. So, V 2 and V 3 machines will coexist. So, depending on what kind of response is coming or what kind of request is coming, you have to behave in that way. So, usually when you are going to implement a machine or implement a software, you will ensure that your implementation can handle both kind of requests. So, you do not have to implement only one, but you have to implement both kind of RFCs, SIP V 2 as well as SIP V 1. Usually that is commercial entities will do that. Okay. Open SIP I think does provide both the options, if you are going to use open SIP library. So, in fact, the complete implementation you can find out as opensip.org. So, this is where you can get the library and then this is the complete implementation of this. So, tomorrow if you want to actually build up any application, you can use the code from here or you can contribute back. Now, a status code here is three digit code, this I have already mentioned earlier. and only the first digit will specify, there are three digits, this will specify the classification. So, 101 or 1002, 199 series will correspond to what we call a provisional response code. and you can also write it as 1 x x, x x represents going from 0 0 to 9 9. Specification does not talk about what will be for 0 0 will be used, what will be for 0 1, 0 2 something, but this is going to be provisional, but depending on usage they essentially become norm. So, this is there in other RFC not in this one. So, this typically for example, is provisional means that request is received. and we are continuing to process the request. I think this I have mentioned earlier sometime back also. Similarly, you will have two x x category, this corresponds to success. So, action has been or method has been successfully received or action has been successfully received, it is understood and it is accepted, that is what it means actually. So, 200 is ok for example, 200, so, there can be other variant also, but most of them will signify it is a success. Okay. Then you will have 3 x x code which can come, this is usually for redirection. So, this says further action need to be taken in order to complete the request, that is what the meaning is. Four x x is client error. Client is the one who has sent the request, response is sent by server. So, something which has come from the client is malformed, there is an error actually in that. So, I am not able to parse and understand what was the request, that is the meaning of this 4 x x. Okay. So, the technically this request will contain either bad syntax or cannot be fulfilled at this server, that is what it means. See for example, you are sending a message to registrar and you send an invite to registrar, registrar would not understand, it can only understand register request and the response will be success when the registration happens. Now, that is the only thing which can be done, nothing else. But, so in that case, we will say it is I cannot fulfill this request. So, whatever you are sending me is an invalid thing. So, that is what the 4 x x is reserved for. Then you will have, 
सर इन दी एलएस बॉब एग्जांपल सर 486 एंड 488 वर सेंड सर फ्रॉम दी सर्वर साइड दैट इस फ्रॉम दी बॉब साइड बॉब शुड बी दी सर्वर देन सर व्हाट वाज दैट 488 फॉर 486 वाज सर बिजी एंड 488 वाज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल सो इट्स एक्चुअली एज्यूमिंग दी क्लाइंट इज इन एरर बिक Maybe that's a, it's not the server error. Server can still fulfill the request, but as of now, I am not possible because it is coming at the wrong time most likely. That's the meaning. There is a four series was given in that. So, there is five and six also. Let me just come to that. Okay, I have not noted it down. Okay, I have not noted down five xx and six xx, but so there is a five xx also. I think that is a server error, if I remember correctly and there is 6 x x, I think local global failure. Yeah. I think I, I had written it some time back, it must be there on some other sheet, the same thing gets repeated actually. So, uh, that will be the status code. Now, coming to the header fields, so far we have not discussed header fields, it is only a sample actually were shown. So, moving to from request line to header fields. So, header fields will contain typically a structure which is going to be a header name and a header value, field name and field value technically. So, a structure will usually will be header, this will be usually consist of some header name So, that is a grammar actually header value So, a star actually shows that there can be variable number of parameters, a variable number of values which can exist, field value, there will be comma, so this can repeat, h colon, h colon is this, two dots or colon actually h colon is written in the grammar, so I have just copied that, <laughs> actually it is colon. So, header will usually consist of multiple lines, each line usually will contain one field. We can actually have multi line fields also are possible and every header field will start from character number 1 in a new line. If in the beginning there is an space, then it is not a new field that is nothing but the previous head the header field in the earlier line has been broken. So, I can split one single long line into multiple lines, but I have to ensure in the beginning the first character should be either at least one white space or one tab. So, that is a condition. Okay, I will come to this particular example. So, usually header field format is going to be field name. So, I want to actually do away with the space, so I am going to put a dash in between actually to be more clear and this will be usually a field name. And you can have arbitrary amount of white space here before and after the colon that is permitted. Okay. So, this is not illegal. So, in case if you write uh, for example, some field which is there is usually white spaces are not there you will note that wherever I am putting I am actually putting a hyphen for joining the words and make it a single word I am not putting a space because the space is uh, taken as a separator is a delimiter actually for the very various fields. So, again this is a structure, but that is fine. Uh, so, subject 
I am not writing capital. In fact, it is case insensitive. Capital in small does not matter. For example, in email you might have seen that you send an email to me with full capitals. You send it to me like this. Will both the mails reach to me or not? They will always reach to me. Is case insensitive actually? Case does not matter. So same is true even for CPURI. Same is basically is true for any header field, except under special cases which are specified or there is a string under the quotations. If there is a string under the quotations, then it is case sensitive thing entity. Case does matter in that case, they are not same. Okay. So, I think this again has been taken from. So, if a parameter is under inverted quotes, that whatever is there under the quotes has to be case sensitive. Okay. So, in fact, that is also true for HTTP URLs. Hmm? So, subject I can actually put no space, large number of space, and I can write say lunch. I am taking same example given in the RFC or I can now put, so these are all valid whatever I am writing. I can write all three are valid actually headers as far as the syntax is concerned. Subject is uh, I think is not the header field there, I have not verified that. But the what is the recommended practice is, so when you write a software or code, you have to ensure that you follow the recommended practice. But you should be willing to accept, assume that the other guy who is going to send can send you a malformed thing, he may not be following the recommendation, but you are supposed to follow. Okay. So, it should not be arbitrary. So, other guy who is sending you the message may not follow, that is fine. You will be, able, you should be able to accept all this, but when you send, it is recommended you are always going to put no white space here or no space char character and there will be exactly one space character and then whatever is the value. So, that is the recommended format. And header fields can be split over multiple lines, they can be extended that is permitted, because every new header field will be starting from first character in a new line. So, that is essentially q is being used for the encoding purpose, so that you can actually split the same header field over multiple lines. So, again taking an example when this is being constructed, for example, you write so, I am using a standard there is no white space, one white space I can put up a string, but if I write something like this, so I think this is very similar sentence which is there in the text. Actually these will be all, this will whole thing will be one value this is not under inverted quotes, but it is one value, because values are separated by comma. I can have multiple values for one field name, okay, but then they will be separated by comma, there is this is only one comma. So, this one field, this is another field in this case. So, another value actually, field value. Field name is subject. So, before this comma, this is the field, this is, this is the field. A special meaning can be taken off if I put inverted quotes, then it is a one single value. I can have an option to split into two lines, I can put like this. Now, if I put the 
this is invalid actually, because I am starting from the first character in the next line. So, this has to be then a header actually filled, I cannot do that. So, the, this is basically an identification mechanism, so that on the receiver side your software can parse it easily and understand what is the message. So, there has to be at least one space or one tab or more than that any number. So, usually the practice is wherever your first character starts you will that is a recommended text. It is actually becomes human readable that is the reason actually why you do it this way. So, this is in the earlier version both are same. So, I can have multi line header fields. So, we have done this spacing stuff we have done multi line the sequencing of headers is that important. So, in this CRLF will not be there? In the end yes CRLF will be there in the end. In the format. Uh, because the next header has to start only from the new line. So, CRLF has to be there. This is only for one header I am actually you are right there has to be CRLF in the end that is true where has to be there has to be so, yeah formally if you put it. And uh, this asterisk in inside that what does it exactly signify I mean where after that asterisk comma this one yes, yes. No, header value means what it value. Header value is this this is the field. You can have multiple of them. Na? I can actually put for example, subject colon you can say lecture. So, that is the one value you can put a comma then you put you can say food that is another value. You can put say a school that is another value. So, three values for this particular thing. In fact, this is equal to interestingly this is equal to yeah, I will come to that. I was coming to the ordering, but let me give this a special ordering. This is nothing but equal to actually writing this subject lecture So, that is actually equal to three header fields. Header names or header field names can actually repeat that is permitted okay. and the order does matter. Order does matter because if I actually for example, move this thing on the top then the structure this and this are not same. So, whatever is the sequence of the values here in same order they should appear that is important. See for example, this the problem is for example, I am deciding a root field. Root says the message has to go from me to you first and then from there to another guy, from there to another guy. Okay. So, I am defining even the sequence by which the message should go. If I change the sequence, I can either define a root header for example, I can say root colon and I define a SIP URI for SIP colon A dot a b c dot com I can define another root b at the rate i j k dot com similarly I define third one. So, this actually defines the sequence I cannot disturb the sequence ok I can write the third entry as. So, this is how the message will be forwarded. So, it has to go one by one, it has to first of all go to this, from there it will be sent to this guy, from there it will be sent to this. I can set up a multicast conference actually through this mechanism. So, this is only written in the BNF form, this is basically grammar you are writing. Yeah, I am just giving a what is the structure, what are the rules, yeah, a syntax specification. So, I can have C A raise power x y z, the equivalent of this as per this. So, as you are propagating you can keep on deleting or removing. So, remember via header field 
has to follow a sequence. Okay. You cannot simply swap, but I can also put them in comma separated form that is permitted. A comma separates a field value, not the semicolon. I will be also, I can also use semicolon. A field value can also have parameters. So, a field value semicolon parameter name is equal to parameter value and any number of parameters can be there. So, that is also there in another extension in this. So, root for example, here will be this is equivalent now. I have to put a comma remember. Okay. There are multiple values. I say I am now putting it in multi line, so I should not start from the first character. So, I can start somewhere here. I do not want a multi line, I can write in this line itself. And of course, uh, you have to use in all URIs, you have to use escaping. This I think I have already mentioned earlier. Okay. So, all special characters have to be escaped in that case. Let me see if I know which all characters have to be. So, the relative order here does matter, but relative order of fields actually it does not matter unless the names are same. When the names are same within them order does matter, they can be placed anywhere. Okay. So, header field sequence mala 2 you can put in the end for example, from you can always put first. Only first thing has to be request line and after that whatever is the header thing can be in any sequence, but if the names are same within those things the order has to be maintained because that is important. They all even can be combined into a one single entry. Uh, this combination cannot be done only for, now there is a recommendation again, it is not a rule. So, when you are writing a software, so other guy can do anything. Sir, huh. this, which this is from the source, when you are sending an invite that time you can decide. Na. The client, client will give the route, it is like source routing. See, when this is root, this these are users, I am not worried about proxies. I want to signal you, so I will tell my proxy to find a route to you and then pass the signal on, on to you after proper authentication. Then I say after you should now send a message to somebody else. So, I will pass on this whole header to you. So, it will go to you first and then from there it will go to you, then from here it will go to you, then to the final destination which is 2. So, all three guys intermediaries will be informed, these are not proxies, these are clients. So, this is helpful for example, setting up a conference. Yes, a kind of overlaid multicasting when it has to be created. See, I do not want to communicate it to every everybody or I want to just in same message has to be broadcasted to 5 guys. So, it is has to go in this particular sequence. Okay. So, <laughs> recommendation is that this particular fields root root record proxy require See, it does not matter whether I write a small letter or capital letter, I have told already it is case insensitive. I can write all capitals, I can write all smalls, it is permitted in this case. So, one capital is small, capital is small, that is also going to be same. Okay. Not necessary, see I was at the mistake earlier, because that is the way it was written and that makes it more legible and beautiful, that is the only thing. So, that is a recommendatory practice but need not be. So, when you receive something you should be way, you should prepare yourself for the worst, when you are sending follow the recommendation. Okay. Then max forward
and proxy authorization. These fields are recommended to be always on the top of the message. Why they have to be kept on the top of the message? Why you do not want them to be at the bottom? What is the benefit? Computation will be less. Uh, no, computation will still be the same. Only thing it will take less time to parse. Because the message when the message is received at a proxy, these are going to receive all these header fields first. So, parsing can finish much faster for the proxy. So, when I am sending a message to you, all the header fields which I am expecting you to actually parse require should be always kept on the top of the header. That way you will be able to parse it much faster. Because every header field which comes it starts a separate computation process after parsing. So, this parsing can uh, the computation can start much earlier. When it comes at the later stage it will be starting much later. So, I can save time in setting up of the calls or managing the calls. Again, this is a recommendation, not mandatory thing. But you should always start with the request line first of all. Uh, first thing will be always a request and a status line that you cannot change. After that, there are headers, header fields. So, I am only talking about header fields now, not the request and a status line. And then there is a in the end, there is a CRLF and then there is a message body. So, message body also can be of various type, it can be a binary object. Okay only the content length will be specified. Uh, this I have told multiple field values can be combined into one single field value in this way by co using comma separated field values actually list. Uh, this combination combining cannot be done for certain kind of headers. You can do it for everything else except uh, there are four cases where this cannot be done. Here you cannot do it for this particular header field name. You cannot do it for authorization. You cannot do it for proxy authenticate. And you cannot do it for proxy authorization. So, why you think uh, it is not permitted in this case? It is ordered. You simply I think drop the header fields after looking at it, you do not have to reframe them in this case. Okay. In earlier cases you have to reframe. For example, this when you reach to this particular route, this guy you have already reached. So, this will be dropped out of this line, only two will be left out. You are reframing. For this reframing is not permitted. I think it is probably because the hash is also must be going to check for the validity of whatever data you are sending in this. Well, that is my most likely guess, I have not figured out the information, because everything has to do either with authentication and authorization. So, whenever you are sending some keyword or something, it is a good idea to actually always also send a hash with that. Hash will be broken the moment you put that thing, then hash should be part of that string. So, you were saying about sir, comma and semicolon. Sir. Yeah, that is now I am coming. So, now field names also can have parameters, field values. So, I think one of the example was tag which we did or branch in case of your invite and response thing. Now, that is addition. Now, remember the field values are still separated by commas. Uh, this I found slightly strange, because usually whatever is there as one single entity is separated by semicolon. So, within that I can separate the sub fields by commas, that is usually is the practice normally in English language, but here it is done the other way around. I do not know the reason why this is done this way, but uh, that is it. So, a field value by definition Okay, I, I will not write, I will write field name. 
So, header field will look something like this. This is the header field, it will contain a field name colon field value any number a semicolon parameter name is equal to parameter value and any number of parameters can be attached that is why the star is there and this forms one value actually. If there is another value then it has to be comma and then the next chain will start. So, play a little bit sir. See this whole thing is technically one parameter one value one field value. It is only one field value, but the field value has been appended with parameters. When the second field value has to be done there has to be comma and the next field value will come which can also be of the same form. So, branch and tag thing which we had earlier was nothing but parameters. They always took the form semicolon whatever was the parameter name is equal to parameter value. Can't one field uh, may have uh, more than one parameter values? They can have more than one parameter value. It is permitted you can have more than that is why star is put, but the same parameter name cannot be used more than once. A parameter name cannot exist for more than once, it cannot be repeated. Repetition is not permitted. In, in sir? In a Within this field value, I am putting parameter 1 is equal to parameter value. Then I cannot put semicolon parameter 1 is equal to another parameter value, no, because though both are parameter 1. So, what I am saying is if I write A colon B, I say pair is equal to x, y, z. I can put semicolon, I cannot. Now, this is invalid because this and this are same, it is invalid. But if it gets separated by a sir comma, then we get. I can put pair 1, then it is valid. Yes, if I put a this thing, comma, I am now going to have another value which can be C and for which now I can use a, the same parameter. this is a valid formation. So, basically if you can send this uh, these are basically like parameters the way tag is for example, a random string which is generated for every to and from fields. There is a branch which is there in the via header field actually which was put. So, those are all parameters actually. So, case sensitivity I think uh, one of the good example is contact I can write. No, this is not I am not going to put another field, I am putting a parameter. So, I have to put a semicolon. This Both are same or not same? They are going to be same because all things are case insensitive. Uh, last example, sir, we saw that contact uh, header field, sir, in that we were resolving to IP address. Resolving to IP address, not. I can put domain name also. No? PC33.atlanta.com. Yes, PC33, that will be the. Uh, because this will be SIP. Uh, right, currently it is given like this. I can put PC33.atlanta.com also, fine. I am giving an example. Time Contact will expire after this much time. Yeah, you are telling me you have to connect to me, but I will be probably moving out. So, with after this time I will not be available here, unless I actually send you another invite or another update. You have to keep on updating. 
the source. See, when you are going to send a message to somebody, you will add your contact. Contact is expired. Expire also you will add. Na? You are here, say for example, in next 60 minutes after that, certainly you will not be here. So, you kind of give a lease key for this IP address, you keep on correcting me only for this much period. After this, if I do not send you another lease kind of thing or another inform update, you are simply assume that I am not there on this address. It is like if you are going to a your uh, internet cafe, you want to log in. You would like to always set ki whether I work, do not work after 15 minutes, this system should log out. I should be logged out, out of it actually and all my data should be erased. But if you are going to work for another 15 minutes, before the 15 minutes expire, you will send another update. You will again do re-authentication. So, one authentication is valid only for this much period. So, you have to again do another authentication for increase your validity period. I think it is for that purpose. The logical choice is this is the way it should have been designed. Now, these header fields which are there, they are again are can be categorized. Some header fields will be existing only in requests, some will be in responses, some will be in both. So, these are categorized as request header fields and response header fields correspondingly. Now, you are writing an engine or software basically or a server, you end up in getting a message, a request actually has come to you and it gets a header fields which corresponds to a response, what you will do with that. Should you ignore the whole message? Should you ignore only that header field? Or should you start making noise? The rule is very simple in internet, if you do not understand anything, simply ignore it. So, ignore that header field, whatever you can understand, do all the parsing, all actions have to be taken as per that. That is the rule. And there is a thumb rule followed everywhere in the all almost all internet protocols. If you understand it is fine, if you do not forget it. Now, there is another interesting thing. So, far I have given you all kind of very long names of header fields. SIP also does have something called short forms of this. Short form of all header field names does exist and you can use that. So, when you write a software, your software should actually understand both forms. A proxy midway can actually change your header field name from longer to shorter form or shorter to longer form. If there are multiple uh, times a field is existing, some of them can be in short and some of them can be long that is also permitted. So, both are valid entries, they but they both will mean the same thing. And why this short form concept was actually invented? No, <laughs> there is a maximum transmission unit, maximum size of a UDP packet. Okay. You cannot transmit larger than a size. So, if your message itself become too large, then what you will do? If you say you, you cannot, your things whatever you are trying to transmit cannot be packed into one single UDP, start compressing, start using shorter form, that is the immediate thing. If you are using a TCP transport, which is a streamed transport, that is okay. So, in that case, size can be anything, but in UDP, it cannot be anything. So, it is basically for that compression purpose to conserve on the space. So, one is, is human readable, other one is also human readable, but it is a short form acronym kind of thing. Okay, now, coming to uh, there is another important thing that UDP it is fine, when you will get the message your first line will always be request line or a status line. But if you are not using UDP, if you are using TCP, I sent an earlier message after that I was silent, I sent some white spaces or CRLFs and then I send the next message. Then your first line will not be a request line after the uh, silence on the stream thing. So, again in your software, irrespective of whether it is a UDP transport being used or TCP, if you receive a message, all CRLFs, carriage return line feeds 
which are happening before request line has to be simply discarded. This problem will not happen if you are using UDP transport. Okay. So, but this has to be explicitly programmed otherwise this will create confusion because CRLF is end of header. Uh, what happens is when you are having a streamed transport between two entities. So, you keep on sending bytes and bytes will arrive. It is not one packet or a message is being encapsulated into a UDF, UDP packet and sent. So, you have sent a message after that silent. You might send lot of CRLFs or whatever it is and then suddenly you start you got the first request line. So, previous message end finished then you get a request line in between there can be white spaces. These have to be simply discarded actually by design. If it is UDP, UDP packet will come you will not see any white space things will start with request line, but not with the TCP transport. So, with the stream transport this particular issue will come. So, that also has to be resolved. Okay. But after those sir, uh, white spaces in TCP, uh, since it is connection oriented, you will still get the request line. No, sir. You will start off from header field. You always get the first thing is always request line, then header fields, yes, sir. and then TCP. CRLF, and then the body. Understood. Body length will be always, there is always content length will always be part of your header. You cannot have a header without content length field, it will at least be 0. Uh, after, sir, one message is passed. Then uh, in TCP, because it is connection oriented, we get lot of white spaces, CRLFs. Then again we get the message. So, again that message will have request lines. First request line will be there always. So, uh, every message will have a request or response. So, the TCP only has to a request or status, sorry. Yeah. The uh, TCP only has to take out the white spaces. Yes. See, but when you are building up your transaction user, remember you are building up a transaction client or transaction server okay client transaction or server transaction which are going to use a transport so transport is at the bottom as a transaction user or as a basically client or server transaction you don't bother about the transport transport is somebody else's headache so you have to remove all that thing in your client transaction or server transaction actually which i create they actually now receive the message parse it and they invoke the code in transaction user to correspondingly to do whatever is required, but it remains there to maintain the state of the transaction. So, you mentioned that the, uh, the coding of these messages, I mean uh, when I was speaking or voice telephoning, periods of silence uh, or blank spaces are uh, discarded in the machine. No, that is in media. This is purely signaling, setting up of the call. Once the call has been set up between two endpoints, <coughs> in this fashion for example, when they talk to each other. Then I am sending over RTP, <laughs> real time protocol and real time streaming protocol. I can use and I can send MP3 for example, in both directions for audio. So, MP3 encoding because I do not want to send the packets unnecessarily. I can simply keep on if you are speaking then only I will encode and send the packets otherwise I would not. Only heartbeats will you will keep on sending that the connection is a live media connection and here the playback will happen whenever the media packet is there. Otherwise, uh, just to make sure you do not get annoyed, some noise can be played. So, as if you feel as if connection is still alive. So, walkie talkies you do not see, either you have a something coming or nothing coming. That actually usually is annoying. Telephone we do not see, we continuously actually see something coming from the other side. Even if there is silence, you will get some hum. So, this probably can be locally created to conserve on the bandwidth. Skype, I do not know how does it do, but Skype does have a silence detection and it cuts off the voice when it is not required. But even if there is a silence and if you are doing differential encoding in the voice, you still conserve on the bandwidth, because the differential change is very small. So, your voltage levels when they are varying in time. So, these differential changes what are sent. So, if the noise is like this, your differential change is very small. You have to send a very small amount number of bits every sample interval actually. So, any we are consuming much less bandwidth in this. So, there is a live compression, differential encoding, silence detection, everything is there actually in this. Uh, there is one more last thing, there is in HTTP for example, you can send a body 
there is a message CRLF and then there is a message body, <coughs> where you put the payload part. This payload HTTP allows in chunked, means you can actually define multiple bodies with each one of them having their own content length type, content length basically specification. So, a larger message body can be broken into smaller parts and can be transported through HTTP. Now, this is not permitted in SIP, although it is going to use almost same kind of MIME type, same content length, content type, content encoding as HTTP, but chunked uh, body transfer is not permitted with SIP. Okay. So, I think that was kind of an introduction to SIP. We have not uh, this basically giving all the syntax how things will be done and some issues you have tried to understand. So, with that actually I am uh, now closing the all lecture series of E629. So, next class I will be just taking up all the questions regarding whatever has been taught in the whole semester. So, discussion about whatever questions you have. So, my request is you please send me all the questions which you want me to discuss before and so that I can at least go through the text. Even if you do not do it, I will try to give to my best whatever answers I can give in the class. So, next uh, week uh, is on Thursday actually last class. So, it will be all discussion about this thing whatever we have done so far in the whole semester. And of course, your feedback suggestions, uh, because I think we should be open and lot of you are actually practicing engineers, I am not one. <laughs> People who work in the field knows actually much more, they can also provide their inputs. <coughs>